forms and um, sorry about that. Um, and um, was really interested in the these uh, sort of mannequins and started you know drawing the, the, their backs. I was more interested in their backs than I was in the front. I thought it was um, I like the back and I, I like how it's sort of obscure, but I like the posture. So, you know, we got space suits from, you know, Apollo missions, the, the, the uh, space shuttle missions, Mercury mission, things like that. So, um, and these are fairly small drawings. These are probably eight by tens um, at, at the biggest, but it led into these bigger ones that I, I still did on site, but I finished them up in my studio. So this is a full pressure flying suit study, as it says. Um, but as I was at the museum, I also did some research. I, I, I listened to the recordings and did some readings over there. And it's just neat to kind of see what it took for the United States to sort of get into space. And so there was a lot of research that was done and testing of, of um, uh, you know, jets to see how fast they could go, how how uh, how much could a person take going, you know, Mach three or whatever it was going so fast. And uh, this is this this was a, a drawing of the um, one of the pilots sort of uh, gear and suits to to wear in a, a jet that. Uh, went extremely fast that that really was kind of breaking down it was as it was reaching the the, the top speeds and so they were you know testing these things out to see how a person could handle these types of extreme conditions in preparation for space flight to to the moon um, space shuttle suit study so this is another one that's in the gallery and um, again the back the back view, there were some really nice shapes in here. I, I mean, I really liked some of these forms that were on the back and um, the sort of reflective surfaces from the from the hood, from the face covering. And um, again, this is on Stonehenge paper. It's done with white chalk pencil and some, um, I think it's graphite, maybe like a 4B, 6B pencil. And so all of these, all the works that are in the gallery they, it's the paper is mounted. So those of you who are there, you can see that the, the Stonehenge paper is glued, adhered with rabbit skin glue onto MDF board. And so most of my students know what MDF board is because we'll, we'll paint on it or we'll use it to stretch watercolor paper on. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful material, it's cheap, but it's also, I think, fairly professional as well um, at a reasonable you know, cost. Um, but again, rabbit skin glue is a sizing. For those of you who don't know, it's a sizing that's used to uh, prepare canvases or surfaces before you put gesso on it, but you can also use it as a glue. So it's, it's a hide glue. Uh, while I was there, um, also did some studies of some nuclear sort of missiles that were there. These are, these are huge displays. And so, and I'm not knowing what I, what I'm going to do with these drawings. I just kind of drew them and finished them in the studio, but then they kind of develop and evolve into something else. And so I, I tend to cut out a lot of figures from um, art sort of history books and books from Winslow Homer and artists from that time period. And I, I'll cut them out and then I'll kind of place them in my paintings or drawings and kind of see how I can integrate them into the space. And, and so, and you know, living in Pennsylvania, you do see some interesting juxtapositions with different uh, populations of people. And I think like Amish, Amish people would be one uh, group that's interesting to me because um, they it's sort of time has stopped for them. And when you see them out in public in juxtaposed to like technology and contemporary life, it's it's very uh, it's just really interesting. It's like literally two different time frames coming together, and and so with these Winslow Homer cutouts, 
I mean, they're not Amish people, but they kind of have that feel to them. And so I have been really interested in that for a very long time. It's hard to shake off, and I don't think I'm going to be able to shake off the whole time juxtapositioning. This was a space sled at the museum and uh, very complicated structure. And I decided to go ahead and draw it. Um, and it, this is the result. So I drew the, the drawing of the space sled. Again, it's on Stonehenge paper uh, cream and finished it in the studio. And then I was able to sort of integrate this Winslow Homer figure into the, into the space sled. So it was not, this was not uh, sort of pre-planned. Uh, things sort of uh, develop you know, as, as I go along. There is an aesthetic that I'm trying to achieve there. So that's, I would say that's probably planned. There's a certain look I want. I don't know how exactly how I'm gonna get there, but it becomes what it becomes. And so I have this juxtapositioning of two different histories coming together, uh, two or more histories coming together, two different time frames, And so we have this sort of interesting image where, you know, this, this woman is in this space led, you know, and she shouldn't be if she's in the museum, but it just kind of creates a curious image, um, again, between two, two different time frames. What's interesting about this one is if, if you see the handle um, there to the left where you would hold it with your hands, I had to sort of do a little bit of drawing and cutting out of that shape to collage and glue that to overlap the figure to kind of push it back <coughs> into space. So some kind of fun little um, solutions, you know, to some of the, you know, uh, compositional problems that can come up. Now, this is where the the appropriated image, the borrowed image comes from, uh, again, a Winslow Homer uh, painting. I don't have the names to all the paintings, to all my references, but um, again, you'll see a lot of these Winslow Homer. So obviously the one at the far right bottom is, is the figure that's being used. So I will acquire, you know, either through like a, a, the thrift store or thriftbooks.com or old books that I've had, and I will literally cut right out of the, the art books, these art history books or whatever. I'll, I'll cut them right out. And, um, and so I have, that's, that's their purpose. The purpose is to be used for collage and not necessarily for a lot of reading and research, but it's for material. Uh, because of the high quality of it, it's hard to match that when you're printing it off on a laser jet printer. Um, it's just hard to match. So I just use it right from the books and I'll cut them out. So I'll spend sometimes just, you know, several minutes or a day or two, just kind of cutting, uh, just cutting images out. So that's where that, uh, that comes from. And this is another image coming in from the swim where it uses the same image or not the same image, but the same painting, but uh, to the figure in the middle, um, that's what's being used. So you know, I'll, I'll use as much as I can of a particular painting and sort of use it as material um, into, into the work. So this is a watercolor painting. And one of the things I was experimenting with was, you know, how will the Stonehenge paper take watercolor? And, and so this is the Stonehenge glued with the rabbit skin glue, the hide glue onto the MDF board. And what was nice about that is that the paper doesn't doesn't buckle when it's glued down, and so those of you who have done watercolor painting before, and those are in, that are in my class right now, know that's a challenge: is the buckling of the paper. Because what happens when you get a buckle, then you get a little valley, and the water wants to collect in that valley, and you get these blossoms of explosions of, of paint and and color, uh, which can be kind of nice. Um, now there's some blossoming happening in the back of the sky, but I don't really mind that so much. So the, the thing was, how will Stonehenge paper do? And Stonehenge paper does fine, but you can't do multiple layers because it's not, uh, it has something to do with the cotton content, I think in the paper and how the paper is sized and uh, with, with glue, with the high glue. Um, but I was able to get some nice kind of quick uh, 
marks and layers of the watercolor onto it. And um, I'm, you know, fairly pleased with, with this image. Um, I think in retrospect, I probably would, you know, just get, glue the watercolor paper on the board and, and do it that way. But um, those of you who want to experiment, Stonehenge paper, um, it does have a range of ability for wet media. Uh, okay, so going back to this slide, there, there is a little space capsule back there and a ship uh, that's about ready to kind of rescue this, this space capsule. So this painting is kind of leading into this next group of works. And as I was thinking about the space race and, you know, just things I'm interested in, and I mean, the whole sci-fi element, I think, is, is very influential growing up and today and, and, and again, the, the history. Um, in my sabbatical, I was thinking about doing the space race and um, doing research on that and conveying that in my, my drawings and paintings and mixed media works. And then going to the that the um, Dayton Air Force Museum, there was so much stuff there. It's hard to kind of decide what to do. But I do know one thing that was became clear was the space capsules that either the United States or the Soviet Union, the Russians would use were very interesting to me. I like the form. And early on in my academic career, um, or just you know, artistic career, water towers would be a very common motif. So you may see water towers come up in my work. And so I would explore different water towers. So the form is really interesting to me. And so these shapes, different, different designs on returning back to, to, to Earth from outer space, um, it was really interesting to me. Um, I, I, I just love these sort of bell shapes and spheres and um, all the sort of textures that are that are on there. So again, these are diff different designs from the United States and sort of Soviet Union designs there. So I like that form, that, that overall shape. And so this, this uh, sort of, this drawing came from that inspiration of, of these space capsules. And so this is actually on the website. So I left a statement on the website uh, at Holy University. And, um, and so this is Freedom. And so that's the name of the capsule. It's from the um, Mercury sort of uh, mission where they, we have the first man who enters into orbit and that's Alan Shepard. And, uh, and so this, I worked on this drawing probably started probably uh, to early 2019, late 2018, and kind of continue to work on it. Um, I may even have students in my class right now in this watercolor painting class who might remember me kind of sh uh, kind of tinkering with the idea. Um, but it's from a, a photograph. It's it's a, there's a reference that I was going by, and it's on a Stonehenge paper. And instead of using the white chalk pencils, I used like a gouache watercolor, opaque watercolor paint, like white for the, for the waves in the, in the negative space. Um, and so this is, this is the moment after the flight is done, Alan Shepard has come back. It's a big deal. We've entered into space. Uh, we are in competition with, uh, with Russia or the Soviet Union at the time. And um, it, it took a lot of uh, research and, and test studies and for these people to sort of make this happen. And I encourage you to, if you're interested in that type of science and history, there, there's, it, it, it took a lot of work, a lot of hours and suffering and money. Um, and in my statement on the website, it does talk about, and, and I believe it, it took a lot of God's grace to even allow something like this to happen. For us to even go to the moon, I mean, that really takes, um, I think, something other than ourselves um, to 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 make that happen. And so that's why you see uh, the figures on the right, the priest and the the attendant, sort of there. I don't know the relationship between these two individuals on the right, other than this looks like um, a, a, like a holy moment. 
Um, I'm, I'm interested in, in priests and pastors in like the military or space flight or extreme situations. Um, you'll see that on in documentaries or on the news. Um, we have the war in Ukraine right now. And so I watched a documentary on the 2014 sort of uh, riots and uprisings in Ukraine. There's a really nice documentary uh, from Netflix online, uh, really interesting. But you'll see like the, the local residents of the Ukraine sort of fighting against this corrupt government. But you'll see the priests, these Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox priests in the middle of it praying for these, just these common civilian soldiers basically. And so I think those types of situations can create moments of, well, do you, are you gonna have faith in God to help you through this situation or are you gonna to turn to something else? So that's kind of how this, this drawing sort of developed. I, th I really think it's one of the stronger pieces for me um, in the whole body of work. And for various reasons, part of it's technical too. Um, drawing that space capsule was, was a challenge, um, but it was very rewarding as well. It was nice to get back down to drawing because I, I do a lot of painting and some mixed media prints and things that you'll see but it was nice to get right back down to drawing and just love the basics to art making and, and rendering, rendering things. Now the orange little mark on the upper right hand corner, that's done in oils. You can even see some of the oil, linseed oil kind of seeping into the paper uh, around it. Um, and so you'll notice every now and then you might see like a, a mark, like a red mark or an orange or stripe here and there. And that's usually for balance and color contrast because design is, is very, very um, important in art making. And I, I stress that more and more to students that remember design. You wanna have a good design. You can be good technically, but if your design is just okay, you know, your painting or drawing is gonna be okay, uh, no matter how technically savvy it is. Um, so here's the, the reference photo that I was working from. You can see I took parts of it. I didn't do the whole thing. Um, and then I replaced the figures on the right-hand side with the priest and the, the attendant there who is kneeling down. Um, so it was, it was good. It was, you know, you hear people say, well, you know, draw from life. Um, but, you know, you can't always do that if you're doing things conceptual. So working from references is a very, very good um, way to sort of convey your ideas. So, you know, thinking about that, that vessel, the, those capsules, I, I really ran with those forms. I have so many more paintings and drawings that I did that I'm not even showing you here. These are more the, the cream of the crop, the ones that made it, okay? So those of you who are developing your work and developing ideas, a body of work, like it takes work. It's not just, here's the assignment, here's a project, I'm gonna start and finish that and that's gonna be it, okay? That's not how it works, it's, it's research. It's creative research and there's a lot of testing things out. Um, and so another technical challenge was um, color pencil and chalk pastels. Can I exhibit a pastel with no glass and no frame, but really it's the glass. And so this is, a, this is in the exhibition and it is a pastel, and so, but it's it's fixed and it's sprayed with a clear satin. I think it's a satin clear spray enamel, and so which is kind of misted on, probably three layers. I did have a grad assistant at the time to help me with all this kind of grunt, kind of work, which was gluing paper down, and sealing and mounting and things like that. So I was fortunate to have uh, David Kiefer was his name. He graduated um, spring 2020. Um, so um, yeah. so that was- um, I tried to load, I probably talked to him on the phone. It was, it was an achievement. It only goes to 12.55. Is it an IEP on the phone? No, no. Okay. So, and then- Somebody's audio is on. 
He doesn't know how to oh, do this. Like, he doesn't have some kind of law. Because I can get a supervisor. Let's get a supervisor. Okay. I'll get a supervisor. There we go. They can talk. I just, I want to make sure everybody else can hear what I'm saying. So, um, so anyway, like the pastels, like that was, that was a huge, I'm not sure if I fully, I still have more research to do in that area, but it's in the exhibition and um, it's, it's holding. There's nothing like falling and like no charcoal or pastel dust falling. I think there's just, there's enough of the clear satin spray enamel um, that's kind of holding it in into place. Um, and so again, there's, when you're doing research, it's not just like con conceptual research. There's like the technical thing. There's the, the, the technical curiosity is never going to go away for me, I don't think. I want to know how things work. I want to improve. I want to get better. Um, and some of this stuff is practical. You know, so glass is a little bit more expensive to ship out. And um, without a doubt, it, it requires much more sophisticated packing. And so just developing these uh, processes where I don't have to frame and mat, you know, drawings and pastels or watercolors under glass, you know, I can kind of mount them. So those of you, all the students who are, who are there at the university, that on a technical level, that's one of the biggest achievements for me. And hopefully you can kind of glean from that and, and um, maybe use that in your future endeavors into exhibiting. I wouldn't say I'm the first one's ever done it for sure. It's not, not the case because I've, I've seen other people kind of attempt to do these things and, and that, but it was my intent originated from trying to keep the cost down in shipping and keep the work safe so you're not breaking glass. So this is where the painting came from, another Winslow Homer painting. And um, again, I, what I like about these works is, again, the, 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 the juxtaposition of like, you got this mother and child out in the field and, you know, just taking a look at finding out what is this thing that just landed in our backyard. Um, and, you know, we, we see these instances, I think, happen in history, whether it's space flight and this debris you know, whether it's the space shuttle explosions or just caps, capsules, you know, landing into these fields or in like World War II, you'll see like um, there may be old sort of tanks that have been rusty and, and destroyed that are still in like farms and fields and stuff like that. Um, it's just an interesting juxtaposition there that's sort of kind of eerie, but curious. Here's another example of that with country school lesson. Very, very small work that's in the exhibition, uh, but done on a kind of a gray green pastel paper. So um, with the white chalk and, and graphite. This is where that house comes from with the, the students. So that was just kind of collaged into place. And, and I like the color contrast. I think why well, I still like this work is the color contrast between the warm, hot, red schoolhouse and the cool sort of midtones of the paper? Um, I like that that uh, contrast, and there's a slight flatness to the to the image that I'm okay with. I think it's I think it works nicely. But again, the same idea of like, you know, here's this foreign object, this anomaly in this space, um, and these these students from the 1900s is sort of over, you know, checking it out. Uh, but the question could be, well, is it today too? You know, could this be an Amish community um, that, you know, sort of is encountering what they encounter very often, which is, you know, contemporary society and, and technology. Kind of, a, kind of a similar sort of feel, except there's a more, bit of a more military element going on here with the Civil War kind of uh, captain or general um, in this space. I've had these sort of imaginary thoughts of, of you know, uh, these foreign objects sort of coming into play with these battles. And I think I've had that thought since undergrad back in 97. Um, uh, my, my imagination has gone there several times and it hasn't, I haven't shaken it off. And that's 
basically what I think my part of my aesthetic is and interests conceptually is kind of seeing those juxtapositions. Here's the photo reference that I worked from. I, I love this photograph because of the light. There's some nice shadow. There's some interesting burn marks going on on the surface of this capsule. Um, and, and again, I did not know I was going to put the figures or the dog into this composition. Didn't know I was going to put the fence posts in there. It just started with placement. I want to place that capsule in the appropriate spot on this uh, sort of tan pastel paper. And then I kind of go from there, I let it kind of uh, develop. And I believe that's a, that's a, Rus yeah, it's a Russian space capsule. Uh, this is, I think, one of the only prints in the exhibition as far as like etchings. This is an etching. And so when you look at it, you'll, you'll see some of the etching marks that are in there, those of you who are you know, in the gallery. Uh, but I only did, I think, one or two prints of this. And one was a test piece. It was just too light. This one turned out good. But instead of me going in and doing any type of uh, intaglio or um, kind of shading in with printmaking techniques, I just used graphite to shade in the rest of the areas. And um, I honestly, I think I prefer that better to have a combination of etching and graphite. And I would love to do more of these. Um, they do take some time though to, to etch and, and prepare and do um, you know, test pieces and things like that, but was able to do a few etchings um, during that time. But the, the sort of, again, juxtaposition of this space capsule and this sort of uh, domestic cow, probably a, a Jersey cow, kind of checking out this and is the person still in the in the capsule I think that's sort of the question is he just coming out um, or is it is he long gone uh, another similar form with the space capsule this is not in the show um, would have put it in the show but there was some uh, slight technical issues with the framing on it um, it's a larger piece and on a Stonehenge paper with some white gouache, some uh, white chalk pencil, and then you have this sort of uh, collage religious sort of type of element there, these two sisters. Um, so it's, it's a biblical reference, but I wouldn't say that this necessarily feels very biblical, um, although it does look like it's from a different time compared to the 1900s or the Winslow Homer references. Um, but I, I tell my students sometimes, and I just told one the other day that I'm a spectator as well to my work and I'm, I'm part of the audience. And uh, just like things are kind of curious or mysterious to you with the works that you look at, there are parts of my own work that are sort of, uh, mysterious or I'm, I'm still trying to understand or comprehend what's going on. And so I just know I like this. I, I know I like the look of this. The composition is balanced. It works out great. There's some nice depth. Um, but this, that sort of ambiguity of, you know, what are these two sisters sort of um, contemplating or sad about? Um, or, or are they looking at this vessel as maybe something of another world or that maybe it's something that they're worshiping or something, or, you know, there's a lot of room for interpretation in, in some of these works. This one doesn't really have that kind of, you know, religious kind of connotation, but um, kind of plays up again of the 1900s sort of feel or Amish in these fields. But, you know, again, I, I'd like to render I like to render these things and dealing with value and form uh, technique. This is not an exhibition, but um, definitely as part of this whole body of work. So that that takes care of like that the, the vessels, the like space capsules, sort of uh, grouping. Then there is this smaller group of that deal with the, the V two rocket. The V two rocket rocket was the first long range ballistic missile. 
developed by the Germans and uh, during World War II. And so uh, obviously it was meant to you know, cause destruction to the allied forces. And, um, but I, again, like things like this, like it's, it's a precursor to flight to the moon. Okay, it's a precursor to flight into outer space. And I, I'm interested in that. I, uh, there's some really interesting things in the Civil War, like the first submarine. And, and um, I don't have a picture of it, but you know, if you're interested in that, check it out. Like, um, it looks very modern. It looks very almost current um, in contrast to everything else that's going, that was going on in the 1860s. Um, and so you know, this is you know, 1942, maybe this B-2 rocket. And um, I mean, it's, it's pretty intense in my opinion, to kind of see that this was in the hands of the Germans. But that technology was, you know, later on, you know, taken and to the US. Um, and so that was, you know, helped to develop, you know, uh, propulsion in, into the, uh, to the moon and to outer space. Um, but this, this was one of the first drawings I did. This is not an exhibition, um, but it's part of that group again. And working on found paper. So this isn't Stonehenge paper. Uh, this is found paper. It's original Courier and Ives paper. So it's very, very old. Somehow my wife acquired it. Uh, I don't know how we got it. It was in the basement uh, somehow of our house. And um, I like old paper. So I collect a lot of old paper. I haven't done it lately, but I have a, uh, a nice little stack of just old paper that I'll take from books, uh, the back ends of the books that might be really, really old. And because I like that stained look, it's really hard to mimic that with, with um, coffee and tea and, and paint. Um, or even when if you, you can look to buy it online, but it doesn't look very authentic in my opinion. Authentic to me is like the real thing, get really old paper. And I found old paper here in the building actually in, at IUP of old books where there's wormholes, like literally wormholes all the way through a book, um, which amazes me to, to, to even see that. It's some type of bug that's sort of eating it. It's probably not, I don't think it's really a worm, um, but I like old paper. And so um, I did this drawing of the V2 rocket and, and it has a collage element and a, a transfer. And so to the right here, you see the, uh, the original drawing. So it's appropriated from a collection of Civil War drawings. So this would have been done on site by the artist. And, um, and so I, I really like this little study that was done. And you begin to play. So you start with the rocket. That's where I started. And then you start making decisions on how to resolve this. And so I uh, started to play and integrate and transfer using a Citrusolve transfer technique where you release the ink from your laser jet print onto the paper. And then of course there's the, the watercolor Winslow Homer collage there. So, so there was you know, some interesting technical things that happened to this as well. It was a challenge to glue it on the MDF board, but it you know, worked out pretty good. There's another uh, version of the V2 rocket and um, with some collaged elements from Civil War imagery uh, from Winslow Homer paintings. So this was in color pencil on the Stonehenge with a laser jet print that was transferred. So using the Citrusov technique, transferring it on the uh, Stonehenge and then doing um, color pencil and not chalk pastels on it. So these were colored pencils um, that were that were used to sort of you know add color to the black and white image. So this was uh, again this was a, a drawing that sort of developed. There was some editing going on in the negative space. You see the little water tower in the back. Um, again that's that's an old motif that I've used and it helps to kind of add a little bit of an element of life and that there's a civilization kind of going on in that area. Uh, scud muscle is, you know, I was, this is a reference to the 
uh, the war in the Middle East uh, in the 1990s. Um, and so I, I thought, but it's a reference to the rocket, to the, to the V2 rocket. And so I thought I would sort of kind of play with that image, the sort of uh, fragment of one of those Scud missiles and sort of do the colored pencil on the Stonehenge paper and the collage sort of integrated into that, into that space. Uh, getting down to sort of the last bit of the presentation here. And um, there's this other group of works that you see in the exhibition where there's these UFOs. So that goes with that kind of sci-fi interest that I, that I have. Um, and I did a lot of research I sort of acquired on online these images of UFOs and started, you know, looking at other old Renaissance paintings with these ambiguous looking forms in the in the sky and um, looking like UFO like imagery, but maybe they're just angelic symbols. Um, so I I've and I'm still curious about these these um, this motif. And it there's something eerie about it. There's something kind of strange. We hear about it a lot from time to time on the news. And so this was uh, a painting that was done, I think in 2018. I thought it kind of fit into the show. There was some common threads there uh, with the, the UFO element there. There's the transfer with the, there's sort of a, a, a cart and a, a dead horse on the ground. That's all transferred with citrus all technique on gesso. So you can do it on, on the stone edge paper. It works really, really nice. A little harder to do it on the gesso, the, the, the tinted gesso. So I tint the gesso with a with some acrylic paint, make it look kind of like a like a, a nice paper color, and then I'll kind of slowly uh, transfer the ink onto that surface. So you have the collage there, the figure, you have the the white and the orange red stripes of oil paint, and a lot of these things are like design decisions and aesthetic. Uh, I like the look of that. Uh, this was not in the, in the show, and I've never quite found a place to show this one, and I'm excited to show it now. It's just kind of tucked away in my studio, uh, but it seems a little different than the other ones because the background is a sort of a photograph that was double negative or something. It's it's kind of overlapping. I found it online, and um, then I have this UFO there in the background with this this. Winslow Homer figure kind of, you know, bringing in the milk. Um, but just that idea of like these curious things happening in the environment that maybe you're not aware of um, that, that, that might be happening. Um, and they're just, they're fun. They're fun to kind of play, play with, you know, going back to the idea of like these, these flying discs in, you know, in, in the sky, you know, interacting. And I, I guess the question is, and, Again, I don't think about this as much as I used to. I've, I've gone down rabbit trails on the internet with, you know, with some of this when doing this body of work, but I haven't done it in a couple of years, thankfully. But, um, but just that idea, like, well, if UFOs are real, then wouldn't there have been any sightings there in the past? And like, like imagining during a civil war, like would there have been one sighted? You know, is there any documentation of that? So just kind of fun little, um, exercises and, and sort of imagining, you know, this sort of scenario. But it goes back to my undergrad days of kind of these juxtapositions of odd anomalies and juxtapositions of time. And so this is a combination of three different references. You got the UFO, which is separate. That's from online. I transfer that on top of the kind of the bridge photograph with the horse. That's another layer. And then you got the collage uh, figure in the foreground, kind of kind of scoping out the area. So again, just kind of these sort of eerie type of, of um, scenarios there. But, uh, but really, and a lot of graphite on this. I, this should be in the show. There's a lot of graphite rendering to kind of blend the all three components together, especially the UFO and the, the photograph. 
So the graphite was nice because it helped to, to unify it. Here's some of that found paper I was talking about. Um, I used to work at the Des Moines Art Center in Iowa when I first was out of grad school, did two year stint there as a visiting artist. And uh, they were throwing away some books and this was one of the discarded surfaces that I found. But I like that kind of stamp, the old sort of library technique of you know stamping in and writing in the donor name. And so this is comes from a Civil War image here on the right. And that was printed. I might have even run this through the printer because if you, you can carefully run this paper through a printer without having to do citrusol transfers, you can do it that way as well carefully. And I've done several that way. And then of course you have the, the flying saucer there. So which is not a real serious saucer. It's more tongue in cheek and kind of just kind of quirky. And I like that sort of, uh, I think it's more of a reference to like sci-fi movies, things like that. Uh, this is a, um, a drawing from a Civil War photograph of a battle horse that is, that is dying or has died. And you have the watercolor figure in the foreground and you got the UFO in the background that's drawn in. So a fairly simple drawing compositionally, um, but there's interesting because of, you know, the, the horse, the dying horse, um, you think about even in Ukraine, you got the animals, the people's pets that are left behind. You know, there's that sort of um, aspect to, to, to war that is, you know, not very attractive and very sad. So there's that sort of somber, um, I think, aspect to this, to this image. Uh, to finish up here, I'm just going to kind of show a few final um, images relating to the Civil War, because we've seen that kind of peppered throughout um, in, in my work. Um, but I did make a trip during sabbatical to kind of go to Gettysburg real quick, had like a two-day trip uh, with my sons and um, wanted to have that kind of feel of going out to the battlefield and drawing these scenes like the old, you know, uh, on-site Civil War um, artist did. Um, we stayed at a place that was had some cows. Uh, we sat at a B&B &B basically, and, and there was some nice cows. And I really wanted to draw cows really bad. And uh, it was really nice to kind of see that we were living or staying at a place that had this. So I did some drawings of, of that as well. And so that's how some of these kind of come about. Um, you just have an interest. There's a motif there. In this case, it's the cow. It really wasn't the figure in the foreground the collage element really was the cow, I wanted to draw that cow and do a, a nice sort of this pastoral scene. You got the water tower in the background. And um, and so, you know, you can kind of fill in the blanks of what is the situation going on here. Is this Civil War person making an assessment and taking taking uh, notes of, of food or cattle or or possessions or, you know, whatever that may be. Uh, the Brothers, which is in the show, um, again, kind of a, a similar uh, approach. Now this is colored pencil, again, on the Stonehenge with the graphite, you've got the collage figures in the foreground, water tower in the background again. And I thought I'd show this because it, it shows you where this is coming from. You got the Winslow Homer image, and then you got the photograph on the far right, which is the tree, the tree that I was really looking at to begin with. That's what caught my attention. And I'm out in like 98 degree weather, you know, that day kind of drawing this tree. And then it, it, it became this, this drawing. Um, and that's how it all kind of came about. But um, again, these two brothers kind of working it out in the, in this, pastoral scene and maybe they're just out playing or whatever, maybe they're lost, maybe they're running away. Um, but it really was kind of a technical thing and that tree was what really interested me. I wanted to draw a tree in, in pencil and in color pencil. Uh, I am mistaken, there's one last bit here and, um, and then I'm gonna take questions. But um, I have these photographs from when I grew up in Corpus Christi 
uh, Texas. Um, I was there till I was five, and then we moved up to Michigan. And I lived most of my boyhood and high school years and some of my college years in Michigan and bounced around from Ohio to Iowa, Kansas to here to Pennsylvania. But I, I, these are from the 70s. And so I look at these and there's a lot of like memory here. There's a lot of emotional uh, elements to, to these works. And, and even the color of the photographs that that uh, process of printing back in the 70s, it's, it's very uh, dated. I mean, you, you can tell reds uh, are very, and warm colors are very, very common. And so the last works that are in the show, or at least in this presentation, um, are sort of a little bit of oddballs in a way, but they all kind of have a common thread. So this is a watercolor painting with a collage um, figure in the boat in the foreground. There's a little, but this is Padre Allen, um, the Gulf of Mexico. And so that's what the reference is from those photographs. That's why I'm showing those photographs is because this is where it's coming from. It's coming from these photographs that I look at almost weekly. It's like, I wanna do something with these photographs. And so this was a watercolor that was done um, with that. There's some hint of maybe like a rocket launch pad in the background with some smoke, but it's sort of ambiguous. This is the one that we showed earlier, but it came from a photograph that I that I have, you know, of Padre Island, you know, in swimming in the salt water with jellyfish and sharks. Um, and so this is the, basically the composition, you know, where, where it came from. And we're gonna finish with this one. Uh, this again is from one of those photographs that I'm referencing. So I'm not necessarily always going to these places to, to paint from, um, but the, the Boeing aircraft, which is probably the first sign that we see in the exhibition is and has been a very common motif in my work as well. So you might see that kind of pop up in from time to time in a painting or drawing. Um, but again, you know, you can see the back of the figure of the Winslow Homer uh, watercolor cutout. And there's a part of this kind of trompe l'oeil, fool, fool the eye approach to my work. You know, like, you know, did I even paint that? Or is that a collage? Um, is it all watercolor? And so I kind of want to have that element at times to kind of fool you a little bit until you investigate uh, a little closer. And so again, I'm a spectator just like you. And so when I look at this painting, it's kind of like, well, what is the story that's being told and maybe that's what it is that, you know, at times I'm trying to create a story. I may not know what the story is, but I'm creating a, a narrative type of aesthetic and, and where I'll fill in the blanks and the viewer can kind of come in and sort of uh, decipher what may, be, what may be going on. So um, that uh, concludes my presentation. Um, if, Pamela, if we want to open it up for questions, we can. I don't know if you have questions over there. Yeah, um, any back, your students have questions. I have, most of my students had to leave because of um, class, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Jai, do you have any questions? Yeah, everybody any, loved your work. Sure, I didn't, I didn't think it last an hour, but I guess it did, so. Oh, that's uh, okay. Yeah. Um, any questions from my class at all? I did video you. Is it okay if I make it into a YouTube for the website? No, oh, yeah, go please go ahead. I, in the beginning, but. Got a question, Jake? Yeah. Um, when you're going to collage in those those figures, how do you collage them into your work? Work. Like, is it going on top of um, material that you already applied, or are you putting that on first and then going around it? Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't, I didn't address that part. I'm just using like, um, like a Mod Podge, basically. You just get it from, um, you know, from Walmart or or uh, Michaels or whatever. So I'm, I'm gluing the back of the, of the figures, um, or of the collage, and then I'm just adhering it onto the surface. So I'm not. I'm trying not to disrupt the surface that I'm putting the collage on, but um, 
So I'm just using that Mod Podge. Um, and then I'll seal the, the image. So this one that I'm showing right now was sealed with a clear spray enamel. Uh, I think probably a, like a gloss clear spray enamel in this case. Um, other ones don't have the glossy, but um, you know, I'll try to seal it with something so it, it holds, but just basic like glue, like Mod Podge glue. And then a follow-up to that is, do you ever like go back over top of your, the collage work, like with um, pastels or whatever? Uh, the collage, it's, it's a, the surface is pretty glossy. So you really can't use like pastels. You can do paint. So like in this one, there's a strip of oil paint that overlaps um, uh, Stonewall Jackson. And, and so oil, it'll receive oil paint nicely. So um, you can do pen. You could do a little bit of graphite on top of it um, and acrylic. You could do acrylic with, with no problem at all, really. Um, but yeah, you could really weave it in to the whole process. Any other questions out there? No, I think you've covered everything. It's fantastic. Your influence well, great. is beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, Pamela. Uh, oh, it was really great to share the work with you and your students and everybody there in the Philly area. And, uh, and that's so, um, um, if any of my students have any questions, we can talk in class, you know, about the work. But um, I think we're going to sign off here, Pamela, pretty soon. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Great body of work. Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay.